So, you have another Hobbit movie for me? Yes, sir, I do. So Smaug is attacking Lake Town, and it's burning, and it's all on fire, and it's crazy. Oh, just just jumping right in. Oh, yeah, sir, because remember we didn't really end the second movie? We just kind of cut to black so people would come see this movie? Right, okay, we should probably wrap up that movie before jumping into the third. Exactly, so Smaug is burning up Lake Town. I mean, he's really going at it. And he's attacking Lake Town because he's mad at the dwarves he left back at the mountain that aren't even from Lake Town. That's right. Oh, a very strangely motivated lizard. Yeah, and at a certain point, that bard guy is gonna shoot an arrow off his own son and kill Smaug. Oh. Yeah, and so within the first 10 minutes, Smaug is dead and the second movie's over. Now, do you think that starting this thing with what should have been the climax of the previous movie is gonna have any weird effects on the structure and flow of this thing? Oh, you know, I never actually gave that any thought. Uh... Okay, I gave it some thought now, and it's probably fine. Oh, okay, great! So anyway, that tiny Aragorn dwarf Thorin, he comes down with something called Dragon Sickness. What does that mean? It just kind of means he's gonna be a greedy jerk and make frustrating, nonsensical decisions for like 90% of the movie. Oh. Yeah, and he really wants to find the Arkenstone, but Bilbo's hiding it from him. And are we gonna get to know the other dwarves a little more, get to connect with them a bit? Nope. Okay. You know, instead of that, we're gonna spend a whole bunch of time with that Alfred guy, remember, from the last movie with the unibrow? Yeah, okay, okay. Yeah, he's gonna get so much screen time, sir, we're just gonna keep cutting away to him non-stop. What kind of stuff is he gonna be doing? Well, his whole thing is that he's greedy, right? And so Bard keeps giving him these tasks, and he keeps doing greedy things instead. Well, why does he keep giving this guy tasks instead of literally anybody else? I don't know, but he's gonna keep doing it. Okay, and does this guy turn good or get his comeuppance in the end? No, he never learns a lesson. He just kinda leaves. So we're gonna give this guy a massive amount of screen time, and the character's not gonna change or learn anything. That's right. Well, okay then. So anyway, we're also gonna have Gandalf get rescued from that little cage he was in in the last movie. Oh, well, good. Yeah, freaking Galadriel and Saruman and Elrond show up, and they're all gonna punch some ghosts together for a while. Oh, punching ghosts is tight. Get out of here, ghosts. Oh, do you think you got one just now? God, I hope so. That was a good punch. Anyway, so then Galadriel turns into scary mode, and she yells at Sauron, and he's like, okay, I'm, I'll leave. Leave me alone. Stop yelling. Oh, he takes off. Yeah, and he's not coming back until the original trilogy starts. So that whole storyline was kind of... Kind of nothing, yeah. Wow, 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 wow. So then thousands of elves and people from Lake Town show up at the mountain and they're like, we have a claim to some of that stuff in that mountain too. Okay. And Thorin is like, no, this is all mine actually. So the elves are like, okay, well we're gonna attack at dawn then. They have like thousands of troops versus 13 dwarves. Why wait till dawn to attack? Well, I need them to wait till dawn because I'm actually gonna have some orcs and dwarves and stuff show up. Right, okay, I get that from the perspective of you wanting it to happen that way so the plot can move forward the way you want it to, but it doesn't really make sense for the elves to do that but I want it. Oh, well, it sounds like you really do want it, so let's not get logic get in the way of that. Okay, great. So then Bilbo brings the Arkenstone to the elves because he doesn't want the war to happen. Okay. But then there are orcs, so a war happens anyway. Oh, boy. Yeah, and the orcs, they have those giant sandworms from Dune on their side, so those things are gonna show up. Oh, are they gonna dig right into the mountain so the orcs can claim it? Nope. Oh, are they gonna dig into the battlefield and take out the good guys from underneath? Nope. Are they gonna... Uh, what are they gonna do? They're gonna make some tunnels for the bad guys and then disappear completely. Oh, okay. And how did the bad guys even get these giant worms to work with them? Okay, sir, they're not even in the movie anymore. Can we stop talking about them? Oh, my bad, I guess. And so everybody's fighting and the dwarves are like, where's Thorin? We're gonna lose if he doesn't come out of the mountain. Would Thorin and 12 dwarves really make that much of a difference? Apparently so, but Thorin, he's still dealing with his dragon sickness, so he's not coming out. Oh man, is it gonna be tough for him to get over that? Actually, it's gonna be super easy. Barely an inconvenience. Oh, really? Yeah, he just kinda has this dreamy vision thing where he's falling in gold, and that cures him. He's all better after that. He's good. Oh, well, you know, great. And then right when everything's going bad for the good guys, you know what's gonna happen? The eagles are gonna show up? The eagles are gonna show up. How did you know? <laughs> Just a hunch. Okay, and then that Bjorn guy, he's gonna jump from an eagle into the battlefield and turn into a bear. Oh, I bet he's gonna kick a lot of butt. Oh, yeah, he will. I mean, probably. We're not gonna show anything. We're gonna cut away right after he lands. You sure you don't wanna show a giant bear fighting some orcs for a bit? Absolutely, sir. I think the audience would rather see more of the unibrow guy. If you say so. We're also gonna give Legolas this amazing action sequence where I failed physics in high school. Oh, sounds fun. And also, Feely is gonna get killed. Oh, no, it sounds like he was one of the dwarves, probably. He was. He was the John Travolta dwarf, and then his brother Keely's gonna get killed, too. Oh, wow, you know, that certainly sounds like a thing that's gonna happen in this movie. It is, and you know, he was in love with that elf lady, Tariel, so it's gonna be pretty emotional. So they were like, they were fully in love? Fully in love, completely. And they only had, like, three short conversations. That's right, one of which was Keely just straight up 
up referencing his junk directly. I guess that's romantic. And Tariel is gonna talk to Legolas' dad and be like, why does love hurt so much? And he's gonna be like, because it was real. Oh my god, are you okay? Cool, yeah, sorry, I don't know why my body just automatically reacted like that. Oh, weird. So anyway, then Bilbo's gonna get knocked out for the entire climax of the movie, because I didn't really know what to do with him. This guy's barely in his own movie. Yeah, he's not super important to the story. So then Thorin is gonna battle Azog. Oh boy, how does that go? Well, this freaking guy keeps hitting the ice they're standing on with this big weapon thing, and eventually Thorin tricks him into falling into the cold water. Very smart. Extremely smart. And then he stands directly over him and watches him through the ice. That's okay, maybe he should wait a minute before. And then Azog stabs him through the foot and bursts up through the ice. How does he get the momentum to burst up through ice from underwater? From the fact that I wrote that in the script without giving any further thought to it. Oh, okay. And then they both kill each other, and it's super sad. Sounds kind of sad, sure. And Thorin's gonna be like, you know, Bilbo, the world would be a better place if people valued home more than gold. Oh, is that like the moral of the story? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The moral of this trilogy of movies that we squeezed out of a single book in order to get a fan base to come give us their money is don't be greedy. I see no irony in that whatsoever. Neither do I, sir. Why would you even bring that up? So I guess there's gonna be a big funeral for Thorin. No, no, no. There's no time for that. But there is time for a bunch of Alfred scenes. Oh, a bunch of Alfred scenes for sure. Well, okay then. And then since people made fun of us for having too many endings in Return of the King, we're just gonna kind of end this real fast. Well, wait, okay, so what happens with the mountain? Something, I guess. What happens with the Arkenstone? I don't know. Who becomes the king of the dwarves? Somebody, probably. What happens with that bard guy? Oh, he's around somewhere, I imagine. Are the people of Lake Town okay? Do they get a new home? That's certainly a possibility. Who's to say? Okay. Oh, and Legolas' dad is gonna tell him, oh, you should go find this guy they call Strider. I bet he's gonna be somebody great someday. Kind of a weird thing to say. Yeah, but this way we could shoehorn Aragorn into this thing. He's from the other movies. He is. Amazing. And so Gandalf is gonna be like, Bilbo, I know you found a magic ring, and Bilbo's gonna be like, no, actually, I dropped it. And Gandalf is gonna be like, okay, I won't look into that for like 60 years. Nice. So what do you think? Well, you know, it definitely sounds like Middle Earth has been milked for all it's worth, you know? All, all done. Definitely. Hello, it's Ryan here. Thanks for watching that video. Hope you enjoyed it. If you did, be sure to hit the like button and the subscribe button and the button button and the whatever other buttons. Not, not the dislike. That's a bad button. You could also leave me a comment telling me what other movies you want to see pitches for. As always, check back soon for a new one. See you guys on the next video. Bye bye